with Gypsy Fae Creations. Thanks so much for tuning in. Today's soap is based off of one of my favorite drinks at Starbucks, and it's great for this time of the year. It's If you take their chai spiced drink, whether it's hot or cold, and I ask for a dirty chai, which means I want a shot of espresso in it, and I also ask for a pump of pumpkin spice in there as well. And I don't know, it's called a pumpkin spiced dirty chai, I suppose. So that is where the inspiration for this soap came from. Lots of natural ingredients going in here, some botanicals. I just poured in four ounces of a, um, come on, a chai spiced black tea is what I want to say. So there's four ounces of that. I've minused that from the water that I added to my lye solution. And I just wanna mix that in with my oils before I add my lye solution. I'm also going to add to this some pumpkin seed powder. I think this is the last pumpkin soap I'm gonna do for the year. I had to squeeze one more in there. And there's not too many pumpkin vibes on it on this. It's just more of like the ingredients that are going in it. A little bit of the scent will be pumpkin as well. So I'm going to pour in my lye solution in here. I also have some Tessa Silk sodium lactate, some coconut milk powder, and some kaolin clay in here. And so this pumpkin seed powder, although it has lots of nice skin nourishing benefits and vitamins and minerals, I am just going to be using it as color, honestly, and because it's pumpkin. And I thought I had to have that in there to really make this a pumpkin chai spiced soap. So pouring in my lye solution, I'm just going to very gently um, hand stir this a lot and a couple pulses. I want to keep this very, very fluid. I'm doing layers. This is going to be very, very similar to the banana bread soap that I did. So I'm gonna put this on the lowest setting and just make sure it's it's a, it's mixed in enough that I can then split this up and continue on with my design. So for the first layer of the soap, I'm just gonna add in a bit of brown mica. This is called Elemental Earth, and I got this from Soapbox Micas. So just a little bit of that in there. I also have some soapy shreds. Then I just took some extra soap that was also scented in the same exact fragrance. And I don't know, there's different shades of brown and orange in there. And that's going to go on the bottom layer. So I'll mix that in. My fragrance is a mixture of chai tea by uh, Nature's Gardens and Candles. And unfortunately, you can only use 1% of that in your soap. So that doesn't amount to a lot of fragrance, barely any in this this batch of soap. So I've mixed it in with a little bit of pumpkin and cardamom fragrance in there to give it that pumpkin chai smell. So I'm gonna mix that brown in, I'm gonna mix my fragrance in, mix my soapy shreds in, and then we'll pour the first layer. So for the first layer, I am going to texture and then add a mica line in it and it's going to be with this Sahara Gold by Nurture and that is going to be my mica line in here and then I'll get the other layers poured up and keep going from there. So I have to say this fragrance behaved very, very nicely. I was very surprised because I mixed those two fragrances together. It was very liquidy, it kept very fluid and, and actually slowed down trace and you saw how easily it just poured right into that mold. So that's pretty cool. All right, so now that that's all textured, let's make a mess with some mica. <laughs> Next up is just a, 
like uncolored layer of this batter. I'm going to add my fragrance to it. It does have a little bit of vanillin in it, so it will probably discolor, but I'm not going to add anything else to this layer. I'm just going to get it to trace, add my fragrance, and pour in the second layer. Last but not least, I'm going to add a tiny bit of titanium dioxide, which has been dispersed into water into this layer, and the rest of my fragrance. I'll mix that up, pour it on top of that second layer, and then I'm going to run a hanger through it. And that'll be the end of that. I'll go get my topping or my soapy icing together so we can get some piping on there and the botanicals that I have in mind. run this through the first two layers. I'm going to try not to go through that third layer. We'll see. <laughs> So for on top of these loaves, I've got some white icing that I've put in a Carolyn Crumb 1M tip to kind of look like whipped cream on top, just a few dollops of that. I'm also going to be putting on some uh, dried anise seed, some cloves, and some sprinkling of coffee grinds on there. So that is going to be on the top of the soap. I wanted to mention about the Starbucks drink that if you are someone who doesn't like coffee, you can get it with no coffee. Just ask for a pumpkin spiced chai and you can again get that hot or cold. I think this time of the year there's nothing better than a warm spicy drink. So that's why those are my favorites. And the caffeine, of course. I, I need the caffeine. If I go to Starbucks, I always fight with myself that why am I here if I'm not going to get caffeine. <laughs> Speaking of mixed drinks, I have to tell you guys all about Bradley and I's adventure. Volunteering for the day at the Maryland Renaissance Festival. It was the hardest day, the hardest work I have ever done for free. We volunteered everything. So we woke up at 7 a.m., left the house at 8, got there at 9, and we worked from 9 a.m. until 7 p.m. I thought we were going to get a couple breaks, like two 15-minute breaks and a half hour. Bradley got no breaks. I got a 15-minute break to go to the bathroom and grab something to eat. Other than that, I don't think I ever looked up. I was constantly working, never got to look around, <laughs> it was so busy. Yeah, I barely looked up, but because it was so busy, the time really flew by. Like, that is the fastest day ever. So that was a, a, the good part about it being so busy. I've never bartended before. Bradley has lots of experience in that. He did it for years. I've never touched a tap before, so I was very nervous about that. By the end of it all, I did have to figure it out. You know, you just kind of had to tell yourself, you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> but yeah, I figured it out, and we were bartenders for a day. Um, cash only. That was... And there was a good side to that and a bad side of that, but the bad side being is cash is so dirty and I had to do a lot of counting. Brad did all the pouring of the beers, pretty much. I just took people's money, gave them change, and poured all of the wine. And when I say poured all of the wine, these were like two liter glass bottles filled of either raspberry, chardonnay, or... Uh, medieval mead and these things were heavy and we probably went through about 200 of these bottles of wine but Brad and I just made a really good team I gotta say we were a superb team teamwork really works you know him pouring and me just taking people's money and keeping everything moving there was about a 15 to 20 minute wait in each line 
crazy. You're only allowed one drink per person, so a lot of people got upset about that. But you know, it's the law, and it's for everyone's safety. And you have to yell at a lot of people when they ask and whine and complain for more than one drink. So that didn't make it very fun. We did get a couple people complimenting us because we were the fastest line. And I'm like, don't tell us that because our heads are gonna just be huge. That is like the best compliment because like I said, these lines were 15 to 20 minutes for one drink. That's just amazing that we've got those compliments and those people waited in that, in that long. Um, yeah. So the fair sold out at 12 o'clock. If that tells you anything about how busy it is, it opens up at 10. It closes at 7. It sold out by noon. It was packed. It is the craziest time of the year because the weather cools down and all the people come out and just hang out at the fair. So no one else was allowed in by noon and that is because it was just so crowded. I, I don't even like going to the Ren Fest when it is that crowded, more or less having the bartend, that was crazy. But yeah, my arms hurt by the end of the day, my legs hurt by the end of the day, my feet, my back, everything hurt. I mean, I was pouring all the different kinds of drinks. When you think of a snake bite and a bee sting and a felicity, I had to learn what all of these drinks were and then just constantly pour these. Like, I felt like the bottles were attached to my arm. Easily a hundred bottles of wine in a day. No lie. <laughs> but I learned to appreciate those bartenders that work at the Ren Fest so much. Like that was so crazy. I probably should be lining these up so I don't have to cut into them. So maybe I'll, I'm too late now. If they fall off, they fall off. But I will never take for granted those bartenders because they work so hard. The, the woman that was in charge of the bar we were working at, she was the coolest. She was so nice. She was so patient. She was so much fun. She really, really was thankful for us. She actually said we were the best people ever. <laughs> she wants us to come back, and if she ever catches us volunteering there at another stand, she's going to be really salty about it. She said she had been doing it for 14 years. It is 10 weeks, 10 weekends, 10 weeks of the year that she's worked. So kudos to her. And she also said that they have volunteers. They give her volunteers every single weekend. And I know I get frustrated with having to try, trying to train people who especially have never done bartending. I can't imagine what that's like, but you know, just having to teach people how to do things and all the jobs that I've had, imagine having to do that every single day of the weekend. So she was pretty cool. All right, <laughs> let's get on these coffee bits here. I'm just gonna sprinkle them on like that. I'll give this a spray with the rubbing alcohol and I'll come back tomorrow and we'll cut it open and see how those layers look on the inside. I love this soap. This and the ban banana bread soap are probably my favorite so far, which isn't saying much, but. <laughs> All right, you guys, I'll bring it back when we're ready to cut it. It is time to see what the inside of this looks like. And I'm really crossing my fingers that I did not mess up that bottom layer when I was doing that hanger swirl. Fingers crossed, let's see. Mmm, mmm, it smells so good. <laughs> I really nailed it with that scent. Like, there's a, a good balance of pumpkin and chai in there. And I think I just nailed it on the head as far as that scent of the real drink would smell like. I think that turned out really well. And it just looks so delicious. Mmm. I'm gonna have to make this every year, at least use that scent blend every year because I'll be really sad if I don't get to smell it. I love this smell. <laughs> anyway, the moral of my story, the ending of my volunteer day, I was happy to come home and wash my hands. I, I guess it's, you know, a good thing I'm a, a soap maker because there's plenty of soap in my house to wash my hands. But the water just ran black and I was like so disgusted by that and I can't imagine those people touching that water. Water. Yeah, that, that uh, money all day, that was just a lot. Um, Bradley and I probably raised about $900 
in tips on top of our $10 hourly rate uh, wage. Of course, we saw none of that because it, it was volunteer. We donated all of that to the South Shore Elementary School. The rest of the PTA also raised money and all together I think it was over $7,000. So that's pretty that's a pretty cool fundraiser and I am happy to say I participated in it and I will never do it again. <laughs> I just think it was a little too much. But it was still an experience. I got to see what it was like working at the Renaissance Festival and I will never ever ever do it again. I got a little taste of what it was like and that's all I wanted. And now I know. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you want to buy the soap, it'll be available on November 22nd. Any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. If you're new, don't forget to subscribe. So on and so forth. And until next time, I hope you have a very nice day. And I will smell you later.